Hi, my name is Justin Schaff and I'm the engineering lead at PatchMyPC. In this video, we're going to talk about a specific error where third-party updates may fail to download if you're using a remote UNC path for your WSUS content location. So the first thing that you would want to validate is are you actually using a UNC path for your WSUS content folder? So you can validate that in the registry under HQ Local Machine, Software, Microsoft, Update Services, Server, Setup on your software update point. Now within that directory, there's going to be a content dir string key, and you just wanna check the value of that. So we can see that this is in fact pointing out to a UNC path to a remote UNC server. So this could be a scenario that this could happen if you do in fact have a UNC path. So the first thing that I wanna show is just kind of what would happen here. So when you go out to download a software update into a deployment package that you've published, you're gonna go through and it's going to fail to download. Now, the actual log file that we would wanna look at is in our temp directory. So if you go into your user's profile and just type in percent temp percent in file explorer, that will put you in the temp directory. Now, that would be if you're downloading it from your console. If the download is failing during a ADR, the patch downloader.log that you would wanna look at would be within your site server logs directory. Now, what we actually wanna notice is that we can see here that the download is uh, failing. It's getting a forbidden and denied error code. Uh, we can actually see that the download for this is pointing out to your WSUS content folder and the actual error code within patch downloader is a 0x8007-0191. So if this looks familiar to the log file that you're troubleshooting, it's most likely the scenario that we're gonna cover in this video and tell you the options you have for working around that. Now, what we can also do is if you go to a web browser and if you paste in that URL for the cab file that's pointing out to your WSUS content folder, what we can see is that IAS is going to give us an error code of 401.3 unauthorized. Uh, so even in the error description within your web browser, we can see that this often occurs if you're using a UNC path and the IAS service account doesn't have permissions to that. So that can be quite common. So if we actually look into the specific error code for 401.3 within IAS, we can see that it's unauthorized due to access control list on the actual UNC share. Right. Now, what we can also do to kind of validate that is if we open up IAS and we look at our WSUS website, um, so right here, and within the content directory. So this is where when SECM is actually trying to download the third-party update file into the deployment package, it's actually downloading it from the WSUS content directory in IIS because that's where the update gets published with your certificate. So if we look at the content directory, there's this option here called basic settings over in the right. Now, if we open up that, that's actually gonna show the full path that's pointing out to that UNC location for the actual WSUS content. Now there's this option here that says to test settings. So if we click on test settings, uh, what we can see directly in this test, it's saying, hey, uh, it looks like that since we're using this service account uh, that is specific to this WSUS computer and that remote UNC path does not allow you to add this specific service account within this IS app pool, it's saying that it can't verify access to that UNC path. So what's happening is when IS is actually trying to give you that file when you download it through your console, it's getting denied because the app pool service does not have permissions to actually access that UNC path. So there's really two different workarounds for this scenario. Now, the first one is we can set up a connection account where if we click on the advanced settings over here for this content virtual directory, that's gonna open up a page where you can create what's called a credential that's used to actually connect to that UNC server. Now, I do wanna mention this is a IAS specific feature and this is not mentioned in the WSUS docs page where they actually specifically say that this is a scenario that you could configure within WSUS. Um, but this is an IAS feature and what we're gonna do here 
is we're gonna add a account that's gonna essentially authenticate to that content folder that's out on the UNC path that has rights. So I have a service account that I've set up within my domain. So we're gonna go ahead and enter that in here. Now, one thing that you will have to do is if I look at my remote server that's actually hosting this WSUS content on my file share, I did already give permissions to this service account that we're using here. Now, if you didn't give that uh, permissions, uh, at least read. So if we look at this account, we've got read, execute, um, and list folder content so that we could actually access this. If you didn't actually give that service account permissions, you would most likely still have the same error when it tries to connect. So we're gonna to say to use this account, the credential login method that I'm gonna use here is interactive. Now I'll also include a document for the WSUS, or I'm sorry, the IAS uh, docs that tell us what this different method is. So it will include those four different options and what we'll be using here is interactive. So if we go ahead and save that and click back on the basic settings and click test now, what we can now see is that when IAS attempts to access that content directory from that remote UNC path, it now says that it has access and it's successful. So what would happen here at this point if we come back into our Config Manager console and we go ahead and try to download this update into our deployment package, we can now that see that it's successful because IIS now has access to download the third-party content from WSUS and then put that in your deployment package that goes out to your DPs. Now, the second option, if you don't wanna go in and configure the connection account in IIS, what we can do is we can move our WSUS content on our software update point server from a UNC path and we can move it to a local folder so that the WSUS uh, app pool within IIS will now have permission since it's hosted locally on this computer. So to do that, what we would do is, first off, we'll go ahead and switch the IIS back to not using an account. So we'll go back to advanced settings and we will use the default pass through for the uh, service and then click OK. So if we go in and try to download the 64-bit update, what should happen now is it should error out with that same error. So there we go. Um, so it looks like it's now at the broken state again. So this second option, what we would wanna do is go into a command prompt. And we're gonna go into our WSUS installation directory. So for me, that's program files, update services, and then we wanna go into the tools directory. So in order to move the content, we're gonna run WSUS util, move content, and then we're gonna paste in the new path that you wanna use that's locally. So in my case, we have a local uh, folder that I created called WSUS. So this is where we're gonna move the content for all those published updates and any EULAs that might be in the existing WSUS content from the UNC path, and we're gonna place that locally instead. And then we need to give it the log file. So we're gonna call it uh, C wsusmove.log. So we'll go ahead and zoom in on that just so you can see the context. So it's wsusutil, move content, the new directory that you wanna move it to locally, and then the log file that you wanna save. So we'll go ahead and click enter on that. And that's gonna go ahead and start the move. So if you wanna look at the log file on the C drive, this will show the actual information once that kicks off about how it changed the directories and all of that. So we can now see the content was moved. So if we go into our J drive and look at the WSUS folder, we now see that we have the WSUS content folder and then we have the directories that we have for our published updates. So if we come back into the registry and do a refresh, we can now see that the WSUS content is now hosted locally. If we go back into IIS and refresh, we can now see that the content directory, if we look on the basic settings, we can now see that that's pointing to the WSUS local folder on J and the content. If we go ahead and click test settings, um, what we can see here is 
Uh, we might not have done the refresh yet, um, but if we go ahead and attempt to download, since this is local, uh, this should work for us. So we'll go ahead and download and we'll see if that works okay. There we go. Um, so we can now see that that worked. So that's kind of the two options. So if you're using a remote UNC path, since the app pull service that's actually running IIS and the WSUS content directory does not have access, you would either have to come in and configure your connection account on the content folder, or the other action would be if you wanted to move the content from your UNC path to a local path, that should then fix the issue where it can't access that remote share. I hope this video was helpful and let us know if you have any questions.